Welcome back guys, this is Israel. I hope you guys didn't forget that .NET 10 is right around the corner. And with .NET 10 comes a new version of Entity Framework. So we're getting Entity Framework Core 10. And with this new version of Entity Framework, we are getting two new link methods. So I wanna talk about what these methods are and how we can use them. So let's get into it. But really quick, I wanna give a shout out to all my channel members. Thank you guys for all the support. If you wanna see your names here, as well as get access to all the code from all my videos, click the link in the description or the join button on my profile and send an email to this email with the code that you want access to. But now into the new methods. All right, guys, so I am at the official release page for everything that's new in EF Core 10, and there is a lot here, so keep it locked to the channel because I will have a future video that breaks down everything else that's in here and what you actually need to know. But let's get to those two new link methods. So here we are, guys. When .NET 10 comes out, we are going to have the left join and the right join. These are going to be the two new link methods that we're going to have access to. And those of you that have worked with SQL or databases probably know what a left join is and a right join. But if sometimes, like me, we confuse the left and the right joins, or we forget just what joins are, let me, I have these helpful images uh, that we can go over exactly what the left join and the right join is before we get into the code example. So in a join, what are we doing? We are joining two tables data. So in a left join, we take our primary or first table, and then we want everything in there. And then we're also gonna get matches from the right table. But then if something from the left does not have a match from the right, there will be a null there. And then we get the opposite for a right join. So if our secondary table, we want everything from that and then only matches of the left table. And then if something from the right doesn't match with the left, we just have a null entry there. So I hope that makes sense. But now let's get into the code example so you guys can see how this actually looks in the code and the actual methods in action. All right, guys, so I am at my squeaky clean brand new .NET 10 API. And if you guys are curious on how to install .NET 10 and get that set up on your computer, I have a short that I'm going to link down in the description, or maybe there's a card for it. I'm not really sure, but I do have a short video on how to install .NET 10. So with that being said, we have this method right here called get Pokemon by outer join. And what's the database that we're using here? It's a very tiny database that has a Pokemon table. So in the Pokemon table, we have some information, but primarily the focus should be on the type ID here, which points to a type table and a region ID that points to a region table. In the region table, we just have the ID and then the name of the region. And then in the type table, we just have the type and then the type name. And that's it. That's all we have. So in here, we're going to have our Pokemon table being joined to the regions table. Then we're going to have our types table being joined to the Pokemon's table. So let's make sense of this in terms of the image that we were using earlier. So right here in our SQL joins image that we used earlier, right here, we're doing a right join. So we're doing this right here. So the primary table here is technically Pokemon. But since it's a right join, we are taking everything from regions because regions is a secondary table. So this is all regions and then this is Pokemon. So the only Pokemon we're going to get in this are going to be ones that match a certain region in here. If we have a region that does not have a Pokemon, it will just have null for the Pokemon entry. And now looking at this left join types is the primary table here. And then we have Pokemon as the secondary. So we're going to get all the Pokemon types, and then we're only going to get Pokemon that match a given type. And then we're going to go through and then just return those values. So now let's look at the structure of the right join and the left join since they're the same. So first you're going to start obviously from your primary table, then call that given join method. Then you're going to pass in the table that you want to actually join. Next is going to be the primary tables foreign key. And then you're going to have the primary key for that secondary table. Then based on the join data, you're going to create whatever object that you want to pass back. And then you just send it back in your result. And then the same thing is going to happen for the left join. It's going to be exactly the same thing. You have your primary table, the table that you're joining on. Then you're going to have your foreign key from your primary table and then your primary key from your secondary table. And then you're again going to just create your new object and then just pass that back. And that's everything that's going on. And that's how you actually do a right and a left join. So now let's actually run this API and see what data we get back. But really quickly, if you guys have found this video helpful, please drop a like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of the other amazing .NET content that I have for you guys. But now let's actually run this API. So I'm going to run this. And once it comes up, I'm going to navigate to that endpoint. So it's going to be get Pokemon by outer join. We're going to test this request. And as we can see, we are already here. So let's see the right join. So what is the right join again? 
A right join should mean that we want everything from the second table, regions in this case, and then we only want matches from Pokemon. So we should have all the regions and then only Pokemon that match that region. So if we go through here, we can see that we're getting Charizard Kanto. We see that we have Squirtle Kanto. And then let's scroll down here. We have Quagsire Johto. Let's go down a little farther. We have Halucha Kalos. And now we get here. We have no, so we have no Pokemon from Alola that match, but we want all the regions, but we don't have any Pokemon that match it. And then same with Galar and same with Paldea. So we don't have anything that match here, but again, since it's a right join, we want all the regions and then only matching Pokemon. So now let's go look at our left join. So in our left join, what do we expect? We expect all our types. And then we only expect to get Pokemon that match a given type. So if a certain type has no Pokemon match, then it's just going to be null for Pokemon. So if we go here, we see in the first one is that we have the type normal, but it has no Pokemon match in our database. But if we go here, we see that we have a Charizard for fire and then we have Squirtle for water and so on. So we can see that we're getting like here, Infernape fighting, Halucha fighting. So we're getting all the types. But if we do not have a match, like for Ghost here, we just have the type Ghost and then no Pokemon name because it's a left join. But those are the two new awesome methods that we're getting for Link with the new release of Entity Framework Core 10. And if you guys want to learn more about the new release of .NET 10, click on the video on your screen.